Hello, welcome back to a TCAP commentary. Um, today we're doing a predator deep dive on uh, John Canelli. Um, I haven't done one of these in a while, but um, we're back. <laughs> uh, I have a decent amount of time. Um, I can definitely get this through. Um, y all the information I found on the on on him, and uh, yeah, we'll get right into it. Uh, before we watch the video, if you like TCAP, uh, if you like TCAP, check out the channel. Uh, I don't just you know, read out things. I do also commentate on like the actual segments, but today's a little bit different. But anyway, um, yeah, let's get right into this. Now, the first thing we are gonna look at is the Virginia State Police uh, Sex Offender Registry. Um, John Kennelly is of course on here. Um, I believe this is where he did get convicted at, of course, since he's you know, um, on the list. <laughs> so his registration ID is um two o. 091. Um, his name is Canelli John Michael. So it's John Michael Canelli. Um, he's a male. He's white. Um, he's 60 years old. He's 5'10, 180 pounds. Hair color is brown as well as the eye color. And apparently they have his DNA, palm print, and fingerprint. And he's on a tier three, which I don't believe. I believe that means like he's not an actual like threat threat like he has to be you know um how can i say this like you know on watch <laughs> i believe that's just like a, oh you, you just have to know that in the past they've done something like that like there there i say like an active um sex offender but yeah initial registration um is september 27 2006 and he had the this registration renewed on september 13 2019 so somewhat recent you know it is a big jump from 2006 to 2019. I wonder if he'll have to renew this um, soon, since it is four years from, you know, the renewal date. But um, the record he has on here is the case number is FE 2005-1846. Uh, sentencing court is the Fairfax Circuit, um, I assume court. Code section 18.2-374.3. Is the code he, uh, I believe, violated. And looking at this code a bit further, um, it is a use of communication systems to facilitate certain offenses involving children. Um, there is a, a lot of of uh, words associated with this code, but I'm just going to read the, the, the first few. As used in subsection C, D, and E, use a communication system means making personal contact or direct contact through an agent or agency, any print medium, the United States mail, any common carrier or communications common carrier, any electronic communication system, the internet, or any telecommunications, a wire, computer network, or radio communication system. Um, it is unlawful for any person to use a communication system, including but not limited to computers or computer networks or bulletin boards or any other electronic means for the purpose of procuring or promoting the use of a minor for any activity in violation of code 18.2-370 or 18.2-374.1. A violation of this subsection is a class 6 felony. Uh, it is unlawful for any person 18 years of age or older to use a communication system including but not limited to the uh, computers or computer networks or bulletin boards or any other electronic means <clears throat> for the purpose of soliciting with lascivious intent any person he knows or has reason to believe is a child younger than 15 years of age to knowingly or in intentionally um, and here are the following points. Number one says, expose his sexual or genital parts to any blank to whom he is not legally married or purpose that any such blank expose his sexual or genital parts to such person, uh, purpose that any such blank feel or follow his own sexual or genital parts or the sexual or genital parts of such per person or purpose that such person feel or follow the sexual or genital parts of any such blank. Purpose to such blank, the performance of an act of sexual intercourse, anal intercourse, cunnilingus, fellatio, or analingus, or any act constituting an offense under um, Code 18.2-361, or entice, allure, persuade, or invite any such blank to enter any vehicle, room, house, or 
other place for any purpose set forth in the preceding subdivision. But yeah, now that we looked at the code section that he is um, registered under, the statute says um, use the communication system to contact minor. Of course, after we checked out the code section, that is what he is um, registered under. Um, date of conviction is June 12, 2006. Um, in the state that he was convicted in was Virginia, uh, VA. Um, and of course, uh, the victim's age was uh, minor. But now that we've gone to that, Let's look at his To Catch a Predator wiki just to take a better look at what exactly happened and what happened after and before uh, the sting took place. But anyway, so it's, again, John Connelly. Um, his famous quote is, I just came to get something to eat. Um, Connelly's response when being confronted by Chris Hansen a second time. Not to look at his stats. <laughs> his alias was Special Guy 29 he also went by the name Shane after he got caught the first time. He has an elderly father that we know of. Um, he is unemployed. And um, his physical description is back again. Male, 5'10", 205 pounds, which I believe is more than you know what he ha you know weighs now. But uh, he has a brown eye color and hair. But anyway, John Michael Connelly is a potential predator confronted in the suburban Washington, D.C. edition of To Catch a Predator. He is best known for showing up to the Sting House naked and being confronted twice in a 24-hour period. His biography says that um, Connelly, using the screen name Special Guy 29, engages in sex talk with a boy he believes to be 14 years old. The boy was "quote unquote" so fucking hot, according to John. He wanted to hang out with him. He declared that he was serious when indicated that he wanted the, bo the boy to be his boyfriend if he would allow it. John makes up details about his age and job, claiming to be a prep school teacher of the 11th grade at the age of 29. In reality, he was 43 and unemployed at the time of the sting. In order to show intent, the decoy solicited John to strip down to his underwear and walk in. When John replied that he didn't wear them, the decoy replied, quote unquote, then come in naked. Um, and that is N-E-K-I-D, naked. <laughs> John revealed he was particularly into oral sex before the two had finished scheduling the meeting. John was a fast mover, quote unquote, taking approximately one hour from contact to declaring a boyfriend relationship to making the decision to drive to the sting house. So this all took in the span of an hour from contact to him being in the house. That is actually, that is actually a really, really quick mover. Um, I actually didn't know that about uh, John Connelly. I was under the assumption that he was one of those those guys that um, like to talk uh, um, to, to the decoys and like kind of try to like, you know, talk sexually or whatever. But apparently that wasn't the case. But anyway, on to the sting. First encounter, right out of the two. Uh, John arrived at the sting house carrying a 12 pack of beer. Um, beer. <laughs> he enters via the garage and becomes completely naked, although leaving his socks on. Then he walks awkwardly up to the stool and sits down while counting to 100. Um, <laughs> that's a joke because he just sits there in silence. But anyway. When John enters, he is rendered speechless. He asks John to explain himself while grabbing a towel from the refrigerator top shelf. John turns around and expresses regret. Chris hands him the towel and tells him to cover up. John complies by grabbing the towel and wrapping it around himself. When Chris asked him what was going on, believing the boy to be Chris's son, John said that he was IM'd by the teenager to come over. IM means instant messaged, of course. Um, John claims he had no idea why the boy has sent him an instant message. Chris responds that the boy then chose him at random and instructed him to enter the room naked. Um, of course, that's a joke, but uh, progressing. When questioned about his age, John again states that he is 29. When asked what his occupation was, he responds that he drove a school bus. Later, he changes his occupation back to being a school teacher. Dale Harvey the um, perverted justice um, worker walks away with a tall pack of beer while Chris approaches John to request an ID. Later on in the interview, 
John insisted that he had never before met a minor online, Chris became irritated, declaring that it was absurd that he claimed he had never done it before. Chris asks John for identification once more, and he complies. Chris then questioned John about his plans after understanding that he had just woken up in the morning and intended to engage in an online conversation with the 14-year-old child, visit his home, get undressed, and enter carrying a 12-pack of beer. Canelli stated that he probably would have chickened out, quote-unquote. Um, that's a famous line that, um, that he is known for, the whole chicken, chickening out a part of his, his segment. But anyway, Chris claimed he found it difficult to accept that. Chris begins to read John's sexually explicit internet communication, but John cuts him off and claims he was simply just chatting, in quotations. Chris yells, chatting? You're sitting in this kitchen naked, John, he yells, after reading more of his chat log. Chris declares that it was illegal to have a online communications with the intentions of, ha of having sex with a minor. Um, John admits that he was aware of the immorality of what he was doing and that he was in violation of the law. Chris discloses that he was not the boy's father, but rather a Daylight NBC reporter. John is exposed when the cameras emerge. John struggles to grip the towel while grabbing his clothes. He changes into his underwear and leaves the house quickly. Yes, that was, okay. That is crazy. <laughs> that was his first um, encounter with uh, uh, Chris Hansen, right? It is crazy that it's the second time. This isn't the first guy to ever do this before. There is another guy. There's this, the Oops Predator, I believe. But this was, I believe, the very first one who did it. Or at least the more popular one who did it. But anyway, now we go on to the second encounter, which um, is John Connelly's, you know, cream of the crop, I guess. I don't, I don't know how to say this. But anyway, John was back online not even 24 hours after getting busted. He was contacted by a perverted justice member who pretended to be a 13-year-old boy. John continues to use the same screen name but changes his name to Shane. He continued to claim to be 29, though. When a decoy questioned if he was gay, John replied that he wasn't and mentioned having a girlfriend. The decoy inquired John if he wanted to meet at a McDonald's restaurant after claiming to reside nearby. John promised to do so and asked the decoy to meet him outside the restaurant. The blank is questioned about his penis size and whether or not he wears underpants. When the blank claims to wear boxers, John specifically asked him to arrive without any. That's surprising. I've, I've never actually known a lot about the second encounter. I I don't remember if I read this TCAP wiki before, but um, I don't think I did. I, I, I truly don't think so. And if I did, I'm slow. But um, yeah, I don't remember that being the case of him... Um, the whole meeting process, you know, claiming to, uh, I mean, wanting to, to meet at a McDonald's restaurant, claiming to be nearby, telling him to not show up with, uh, boxers and such. I don't remember any of that, but anyway, let's continue. Chris accosted John much more aggressively than the day before when he arrives at the McDonald's. He claimed that in his 24 years of working on television, he had only sometimes found himself at a loss for words. This is, of course, said by Chris Hansen, which I don't blame him. I really don't. I don't blame Chris Hansen for being so at a loss for words, as he says. John says, in quotations, I just came to get something to eat. Repeatedly. Chris reminds him that he entered a home naked, thinking he was going to meet a blank. He also reads from the chat log John had with the decoy. John becomes annoyed at the cameraman and tells them to get out of his face after he continues to say that he didn't know what he was going to do. Chris stands up for them, however, stating that he had no cause to be upset with them because he put himself in this situation. Then, John tried to blame his actions on a death in his family, but Chris was having none of it. Chris also found it hard to comprehend that he was seeing a psychiatrist and had two appointments the following day. John exits the scene while his shoes are untied, gets in his vehicle, and drives off. Yeah, if you've seen the confrontation between him and, him and Chris, it is some of the best, but it also is really frustrating. It um it it makes me mad that you know he didn't get arrested. He you know of of course he eventually does you know get punished for what he did, but seeing him walk away 
is probably the maddest I've been, or the angriest I've been uh, watching one of these things. Legal process and sentencing. Um, after a second confrontation, police raided John's apartment and removed his computer. He was arrested by Fairfax County and charged by the Commonwealth for use of communication system to contact a blank. A class 5 felony, it carries a sentence up to 10 years in prison. Kennelly was set to go on trial before a jury in June 2006, but he altered his plea to guilty on the initial felony charge. In September 6, Judge M. Langhorn Keith sentenced John to a suspended two-year sentence, three years of probation, a lifetime registration uh, as a sex offender, and was ordered to have no unsupervised contact with the uh, blank under the age of 18. Yeah, I am glad that he did get some time, but I don't believe that's long enough. Uh, that is the, the, you know, the common feeling uh, for most of these, these guys, right? They eventually just get off with damn near nothing, you get me? But uh, yeah, I am glad that he has a lifetime registration on the sex offender list, right? Because he does, de he deserves it, of course, and I'm sure you agree with me. But anyway, uh, post predator activities. On March 10, 2007, two 15-year-old girls were walking along the walkways in Cub Run Park when they came across a man who was facing away from them. One of the girls looked around when the man yelled to catch their attention and saw that he had taken off his shirt and pants and was exposing himself. They turned around and raced away as they noticed the man running after them. He then took off into the woods, disappearing from their view. According to police, an investigation led them to John, and on May 30th, 2007, they filed two counts of the indecent exposure against him. He was arrested at the adult detention center where he was already imprisoned for violating his probation. It is unknown whether he received jail time or was put on extended probation. John was spotted June 2022 at a hotel in southwestern Pennsylvania along with his mother. A To Catch a Predator fan recognized him and sent a quick photo with John looking far more presentable since his appearance on the show. As of October 2022, John is still unemployed according to Virginia Sex Offender Registry. So yeah, that is, uh, that's almost wrapping up all of To Catch a Predator Wiki. We are going to look at a bunch of reports on him, even one with the encounter he had with those two 15-year-olds. Um, but um, anyway, we're now continuing to some trivia that's on here on the fandom. But anyway, once had a job at a sandwich shop post-dateline, was fired when his identity was discovered. So apparently he, he had a job um, uh, uh, at a sandwich shop, right? And uh, he was fired once people found out that he was, you know, a predator. John Kennedy is well known and popular in the Rocky Horror Picture Show community in his town. The community has proclaimed John under their protection and rallied to his defense in the face of any negativity thrown his way. This does seem to be some like random ass, like, you know, community, um, like a bunch of losers, I guess. Uh, uh, it's a bunch of collection of people that seem to want to protect John or, or something like that. But anyway, he was the first predator to show up naked at the sting house, second being Marvin Lackham. Lackham. Uh, I I do remember him. <laughs> I do remember him. Uh, Marvin, uh, you know, you're naked. I believe that's him. I'm not sure. But anyway, I sound so dumb right now. Anyway, the McDonald's he just came to get something to eat is now out of business. Wait, why? How can a McDonald's go out of business? That makes no sense, but hey, fa fair enough. <laughs> In June 2021, during a Reddit MIA where people shared what the men did before they were caught on the show, one user proclaimed to have met John at a community event. Um, the, user alleged, the user alleged that John kept pleading with their parents to let them visit his house. The user asserted that John always seemed weird and could always sense it. Yeah, and on that note, actually I do have the MIA that was done. Um, I believe is on BuzzFeed, so we're gonna yank that and see if we can find it. Okay, yeah, here it is. It's on BuzzFeed, and the title goes, um, People are sharing what To Catch a Predator men were like before they were caught on the show, and it's pretty scary. Um, you know, at a, as a subtitle, it says, He never did anything to label himself a creep. And it was written by a BuzzFeed staff uh, named Hannah Martyr, and it was posted on June 8th, 2021 so um yeah they do have a collection of predators on here they even have people like steven buchanan 
They have people, Rob Klein, um, Cody Green. They have a lot of people. We're j but we're just going to look at John Connelly for now. Um, this is in eh, entry number 19. Um, he was underage at the time and met John Connelly through a community kind of thing. He seemed okay. He kept trying to persuade my parents to allow me to go over to his place, though. I could always tell something seemed off. Thankfully, I dodged a bullet there, says user Bamboo Fence. Um, this is, uh, I believe, a, a Reddit, <laughs> a Reddit um, user. So that's that for the BuzzFeed case. Now, I am going to show you the picture that, they, that people found of him. Now, to the picture in question that was taken of him recently, it was posted by user... Lil Morfiani on the TCAP Reddit and uh, it's captioned guess who I saw out and about um, it is John Connelly in the flesh <laughs> and he uh, he does seem quote-unquote presentable right he has a collar shirt it's nothing crazy but um, he still looks like himself you know <laughs> it's not like he changed much but um, yeah that'll be it for the Reddit part now we're gonna talk about more about the reports that came after the show had happened. So um, here's one titled, uh, To Catch a Predator Update, Bethpage, Long Island, and Fairfax, Virginia, written by Matthew Leighton. Uh, sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> written on October 12, 2020. The page was written mainly on predators that were caught on the, of course, the Bethpage, Long Island, and Fairfax stings, but we are just going to look at John's part in this, um, this written case. So, it says, John Connelly, who showed up naked and then met at a McDonald's a day later, was sentenced to three years of probation and a lifetime sex offender registration. In June of 2007, he was arrested and held without bond after he exposed himself to two teenagers in a public park. After spending some time in jail, he unbelievably received a probation extension. Although he is nearly 60 years old, he is still believed to be unemployed having been fired from a sandwich shop after his identity was discovered and relies on his dad to live. Um, I don't know much about his, that situation with his father, right? Um, I assume he is unemployed and is now living at home with his uh, his dad and maybe his his mother too. But um, yeah, that'll be this. That'll be it for this uh, blog. The to catch a predator update at, at Bethpage, Long Island, and Fairfax, Virginia. And now we're going to report on the actual case of what happened with those um, those two teenage girls that um, he exposed himself at a public park. Um, it is written, uh, man charts, um, two indecent exposures, is written by the Connections newspaper. Um, it was written on Wednesday, June 6, 2007, and it reads, While walking on the paths in public Rum Park, near Steelfield Place in Centralville's Virginia-run community, Two 15-year-old girls encountered a man who exposed himself to them. Now, Fairfax County Police have charged the person that they believe committed this act, John Connelly, 45 years old, of Chanute Place in Falls Church. Police say the incident occurred on March 10, around 1.30 p.m. They say the girls came upon a man standing in front of them with his back towards them. According to police, the man yelled to get their attention and then, one of the girls turned and noticed that he pulled down his pants, pulled his shirt over his head, and was exposing himself. As they ran away, they looked back and saw the suspect running towards them, said police. He then ran into the woods and out of their sight. Police say a subsequent investigation led them to Canelli, and last Wednesday, May 30th, they charged him with two counts of indecent exposure. He was arrested at the adult detention center where he was already being held for probation violation. Furthermore, this is Connelly's first brush with the law. In the summer of 2005, he solicited sex online, but his would-be teen parameter turned out to be an undercover law enforcement officer. He eventually was the star of the show when Daylight NBC television program did a story on sexual predators. Things climaxed when in August 2005, he showed up naked at a house in Hernan, in Herdin, Herdun. What? <laughs> he was looking forward to meet what he thought was a 14-year-old boy, but was greeted by NBC cameraman instead, and Chris Hansen. <laughs> Earlier, the boy had told him where to go for their meeting 
and had instructed him to enter the house sans clothing. Kaneni fled when he realized he had been tricked, but that didn't stop him from his internet trolling for teens. Um, the next day, he was chatting online again, but as the previous episode, but as in the previous episode, the object of his affection turned out to be another man, and when he arrived at their arranged meeting place, cameras filmed him a second time. Police charged him with using electronic means to solicit sex from a blank, and in June 2006, he pleaded guilty in circuit court. Judge M. Langhorn, Keith, sentenced Connelly to two years in prison. Suspending all that time and placing him on three years probation, Keith also ordered him to have no further unsupervised contacts with blanks. Now that kennelly has been re-arrested, while on probation, the court can revoke some or all his suspended prison time if he's convicted, and he may face additional time behind bars because of his latest alleged offenses. He's being held without bond at the adult detention center and has a June 29 court date. That's the report that Connections newspaper made on John Connelly's situation at that park. And now we're going to move on to an actual NBC News report. It was written by Chris Hansen himself and was posted on May 24th, 2006 at 8.28 p.m. And it is titled, What Happened to Potential Predators? In five investigations in five different states, we've come across some memorable characters. What has happened to nearly 130 men who surfaced in our continuing investigation? 98 of those are now facing criminal charges going all the way back to September 2004. Keep in mind this was written in 2006. And now going on to John Connelly's part in this uh, news report, it says here, Our decoy had asked one man to strip before he came into the house. Police sometimes use this technique to show intent, but we never thought he'd really do it. But he did that and even more. Hansen says, could you explain yourself? John Kelly says, I'm sorry. Chris Hansen says, why don't you go ahead and cover up? Connelly says, certainly. The man's, the man's name is John Connelly. He's 43 and his father says unemployed. What? That makes no sense. Whatever. Hansen says, so you just woke up this morning and said, I'm going to get involved in an internet conversation with the 14 year old boy. I'm going to get... I'm going to go to his house, strip naked, and walk in with a 12 pack of beer. Connelly says, no sir. Hansen replies, what would have happened John if I wasn't here? Connelly replies, I probably would have chickened out sir. Now, you might think he would have learned his lesson, yet we find him right back online in a chat room the very next day trying to arrange another meeting with a young blank. The man called himself Special Guy 29, defies the odds, and agrees to meet at a fast food restaurant, but first he confirms the meeting is not about food. He comes walking from the McDonald's. Hansen says, I have been in television for 24 years. Kennedy replies, I just came to get something to eat. Hansen replies, And I have very seldom been at a loss for words. Afterwards, police raided Kennedy's apartment and removed his computer He's been charged with using a computer to solicit a blank, and that is considered a felony. His trial is scheduled for later this year. Even after two investigations in two states, with millions of having seen our broadcast, men still arrived at Dayline's door. So that's the part of um, Chris Hansen's report where he wrote about John Connelly. It's nothing too big, too, too, too you know, grandiose or whatever, but it is him mentioning and um, quoting what happened on the TV show. So now we're going to go on to Predators I've Caught. Um, it's a podcast by Chris Hansen himself. We're not going to listen to the podcast, but we are going to read out the show notes. Connelly, using the screen name Special Guy 29, engages in sex talk with a blank he believed to be a 14-year-old and made overtures to become his boyfriend, saying he is so blanking hot. John lies about his age and occupation, saying he was a 29-year-old 11th grade prep school teacher. In actuality, at the time of the confrontation, he was 43 and unemployed. In order to show intent, the decoy solicited Connelly to strip down to his underwear and walk in. While Connelly replied he didn't wear them, the decoy replied, then come in naked. Um, John is a fast mover, taking approximately one hour from contact to declaring a boyfriend relationship to making the decision to drive to the sting house and present himself naked. John showed up to the sting house with a 12 pack of beer and proceeds to do just that. 
He then awkwardly sat on a stool and waited for his potential boyfriend to come downstairs. When Chris Hansen finally walked in, he was speechless. After giving him a towel to cover himself up, Chris ripped into the potential predator. <coughs> <clears throat> After giving him a towel to cover himself up, Chris ripped into the potential predator about his chat and the lengths he went through to have sex with the blank. After revealing he was caught in a daylight investigation, John went back to the laundry room, redressed, and drove off. This also revealed that he did, in fact, wear underwear. Now, on to the second encounter. It says, Now, 24 hours after this bizarre encounter, before Kennedy was at it again online, Going under the name Shane, he solicited another blank to meet him at a McDonald's that he would pick up and have sex with. When he arrived at the McDonald's, Chris immediately confronted him even more aggressively. Bam, fuck, I'm over here like having a stroke. Oh my god, I've, I've, uh, I've been reading for so long. I'm sorry, guys. I, this is going in right. Damn. <laughs> um, Chris immediately confronts him more. Chris immediately confronted him even more aggressively than the day before. He chronic, chronicled, he chronic, chronicle, he chronicle, he chronicled a little, <laughs> oh my fucking god, this is, this is not good, this is, this is all going in, huh, he chronic, he said, his, this is so dumb, why is this the case, he chronic, he chronicled his foley the day before, and his activities leading to the day's confrontation as well as suggesting he had met many boys on the internet before running into Dateline. What? I... Uh. Anyway, Kelly tries to say a death in his family was the reason for his behavior, which Chris was having none of. He also said he was seeing a psychiatrist and had two appointments the next day, which was impossible for obvious reasons. After walking away with his shoes untied, getting into his truck and leaving, Kelly would be investigated and subsequently arrested. However, he only received a suspended two-year sentence with a three-year probation. Yo, what the fuck is it with these weird-ass words, man? Oh, you're having a stroke, please. Like, holy crap, I have Gatorade. I have water. Why, why is this Gatorade not thir quenching my thirst, man? Oh, my. <sighs> my mouth is so dr dry. Oh, my God. However, he only received a suspended two-year sentence with a proba probationary period. After the encounter with Canelli, TCAF finally brought in law enforcement for the next thing. Christ almighty, whoever wrote this for Chris Hansen needs to be fucking fired. I put it on God. This was so bad. I couldn't read this. This was so bad. Maybe it's just me not, not being smart enough to read this, but what, are, what is it with these words, man? Uh, I'm from Texas. I'm not from wherever this is at, you know? We use, we use words like y'all and, and howdy, you know? Not no big words like this, man. Oh my goodness gracious, man. I'm so glad this is almost ending. <laughs> but we still have more to do. <laughs> we now go to the Perverted Justice um, website, you know, where, you know, most of the chat logs are posted. But we're just going to read the cliff notes <laughs> on, on the conversation. So it is, of course, on Special Guy 29 in Falls Church, Virginia. Um, the quote on here, on here. The quote on here for Special Guy 29 is, You are so effing hot, bro. Can't just be us two? Just for now. Where's your mom? I would love to hang out with you, Brandon. Who said these guys couldn't be arrested? John Kennelly, aka Naked Guy from Dateline 2, was arrested for showing up to meet our fictitious minor twice during the Dateline 2 Virginia sting. Viewers will remember him as the Naked Guy who then showed up at McDonald's prompting the classic Chris Hansen quote regarding the many years he's been in media, never n not knowing what to say. After such wrangling, Connelly was arrested by Fairfax County and charged by the Commonwealth for using a computer to solicit a blank, which is a class 5 felony. It can carry up to 10 years. Connelly's plea did not include a sentencing suggestion or guideline. It will be up to the judge how long he spends in jail, which apparently the judge loved him because he got no time in jail. But now this is um, notes from the contributor, aka like the actual decoy, the person behind the, the keyboard who um, chatted with Canelli. Um, the name he says here, J Alternative. Patience is a true virtue. First, the long-awaited arrest of former Rabbi David K from Dayline 2, now the conviction of John Canelli, AOL Special Guy 29, from the same segment. Canelli was scheduled for a trial by jury next week. 
However, this morning changed his plea to guilty on the original charge of a class 5 felony using a computer to solicit a blank. Sentencing to commence in September. Sentencing to commence in September. September. Fuck, man. Like, I'm actually having a struggle here. I'm sorry to practice. <laughs> Sentencing to commence in September. As most recall, Canelli was the individual. Yo, I need water. Fuck this. Holy crap. Okay, that actually managed to help me. <laughs> this Gatorade was life spot for, with something, man. Uh, I'm sorry if you actually came here to have like an extremely serious one. Like, I usually have these. You know, quite just, you know, straight to the fact, straight to the point, right? But right now, I'm kind of having a, a bit of a struggle with Gatorade, right? But anyway, um, sentencing, sentencing to, sentencing to commence in September. As most recall, Canelli was the individual who shocked the nation by entering the Fairfax County home naked. Then, to my dismay, he appeared online under the same screen name the very next day, just on chance. I began a conversation as a 14-year-old male to see his reaction. Again, beyond anyone's comprehension, he agreed to meet less than 15 hours after his first interlude with Dateline. As you read the conversation between Canelli and my character during the second bus chat log, you will see a very disturbed craze perversion spiral as the meeting place is finalized. Um, to this day, I still am at a loss for words for the emotional roller coaster all who were involved went through during his bust. Special thanks to Mark Bur Burnbaum. Burnbaum? <laughs> Special thanks to Mark Burnbaum. <laughs> Fairfax, Virginia Assistant Commonwealth Attorney and Detective Craig Paul, Fairfax County, for their diligence on bringing Canelli to justice, and of course, the awesome perverted justice team. This is our 61st conviction since june of 2004 and our 21st conviction for this year 2006 thus far this is the third conviction stemming from the work we did with dayline nbc in virginia overall this is our ninth conviction in the state of virginia this is j alternatives eighth conviction since coming aboard as staff we work hard and face some hurdles in getting some of the virginia bus arrested we're glad to see the most preferred resolution possible to this infamous individual Okay, so yeah, that's that. It seems like I need to go check if I'm, you know, dying or something because I couldn't read. But anyway, um, I'm glad to be back with these, uh, these, um, these deep dives, like predator deep dives, predator deep dives. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, we're gonna leave that there. Um, I don't know who I'll do next for another predator deep dive. I know I haven't done one in a while, and you're probably surprised to see this, uh, you know, on the title, but. Um, if you have someone to recommend, right, maybe you know that they have a lot of history, um, they, they, they did a lot after the show, um, I do want to redo, um, uh, Lauren Armstrong, because I think I didn't do his first one justice, but I do also want to do Stanley Kendall and Kevin Westerbeck, but I believe when this comes out, Wester Westerbeck is my latest video, so I didn't want to drown you out with too much Kevin, right, because in reality... Today, um, I was going to record a Kevin Westerbeck deep dive, but I'm like, you know what? I'll leave that for another time. You know, I can only have so much of him at a time, okay? But uh, anyway, yeah, we'll see you next time, and uh, tell me if you like this, if you like the way these videos turn out, because um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, all of the Sketch of Predator channels that um, kind of come to be don't do something like this, um, at least th that I know of, right? But yeah, if you like... The, me reading out all their information and stuff please leave a like and subscribe um tell me what you think on the video and uh follow me on my socials uh i have an instagram it's on my about on my youtube and there's also a second channel that i have called looney tunes where i play D, &D with my friends and it is nicely edited it's pretty funny pretty comedic so check that out uh for some reason this became a massive plug but anyway we'll see you some other time and uh have a good day enjoy yourself <laughs>